こんにちは、ジャパニーズアモのミサです。Hey guys! ハッピーハロウィーンハッピーハロウィーンお菓子をくれなきゃいたずらするぞお菓子をくれなきゃいたずらするぞ Or should I say? お菓子をくれにゃきゃいたずらするにゃ In Japan, a lot of people dress up for Halloween and one of the most common costumes that girls usually choose is a cat girl. So I got myself the cat ears tea. 私も猫耳を買いました。And who usually wears cat ears? Maid o t And the maids are like otaku's angels, right? And so today I'm going to teach you otaku slang and internet slang and game slang. Do you know what otakus say when they see really cute maids? They say, Moe! So, this word, Moe, is lost in translation, but otaku would say, Moe, when they find something really kawaii and attractive. It's different from saying, Oh, she's hot. It's not like that. Moe is more like you see something so precious, so pure, so cute that you kind of get butterflies. I personally wouldn't say Moe if I see Pikachu. I would just say Kawaii. But some people might use the word Moe. But I think usually Moe is used towards girls. Not the sexy kind of girls, but cute. Girls. Like when you see Azunyan from k e o n you feel moe. Like, ah, moe. But you can also use this word jokingly. So even if you're not that of an otaku, you could say moe as a joke. If you go to a maid cafe, there is a high chance that one of the maids will make you say moe, moe, kyun once they bring your food. I haven't been to a med cafe in a long time, so I don't remember the exact time they say, but I think when I went there last time, they said it when they brought me an omuraisu. And then they said, Isha ni moe moe kyun te itte kudasai, or something like that. And so you will have to say it. Like, I mean, if you are too shy to say that, you really shouldn't go to a maid cafe in the first place. So prepare for that if you decide to go there. And this moe, moe, kyun, when you feel butterflies in your stomach, we usually say kyun. Guys can say this, but girls say this a lot. For example, when I read shoujo manga, manga aimed at teenage girls. It's usually romance. When I read that, I always say, Kyun to shita! Or, Mune kyun shita! Mune kyun shita! So, Mune means chest, and Mune kyun is basically the same. But, Mune kyun is also a very common word. I really like action or thriller anime, but I also just sometimes wanna experience the Mune kyun. Sometimes I say, Ah, mune kyun shitai. There is nothing wrong with going to a maid cafe, but people generally think that if you go to a maid cafe, you don't have a girlfriend. And when they see someone who has a girlfriend or boyfriend, basically anyone who is in a relationship, they often call those people riaju. Riaju. So, riaju comes from two words, riaru, which is obviously the English word, real. And ju comes from the word jujitsu, which means fulfilling or satisfying. Riaju literally means fulfilling real life. So, people used to use the word riaju about people who are successful and Happy in their real life, but lately this word riaju is mainly used about people who are in a relationship. So let's say you ask your online friend to play a game with you on Saturday, but the friend says, I'll hang out with my girlfriend on Saturday. Kanojo to asobu, and you could be salty about it, and you could say, Riaju ka? Oh, you're riaju then. Or, for example, Christmas in Japan is all about spending time with your girlfriend or boyfriend. So, if you walk around town, 
you will see lots of couples, lots and lots of couples. And if you're single, it's pretty tough. So everyone else is hanging out with their partner, you are just hanging out with your mate. You could say, Riaju darake. Riaju darake. Darake means it's filled with something or it's a bunch of a type of people. So you could say baka darake, a bunch of idiots. We only have idiots. So obviously it's not a good word, right? But you can use it as a joke. And people who are not riaju are called hi riaju. Hi riaju. And this word riaju has become quite a common word. So even if you're not that much of an otaku, you could still use it. There is another one that's used by a lot of people who are not otaku, which is this one. So W is what we use instead of LOL. So when you text, or we don't really say we text, we usually use the app line. So we say line suru. So when you line suru, you could use this W as LOL. Some people prefer to use this one, which is a kanji for to laugh, warau, in brackets. And this one is considered to be more standard. So older people would probably prefer this one. But a lot of young people or my generation would still use this W. It really depends on the person, so just see what the other person uses and you can adjust. As long as it's your friend, it shouldn't be a problem. If you're talking to a senpai or your boss, maybe not. Maybe some senpai would be fine with it. It really depends on the relationship. Basically, it's safer to stick to the wara one if you're talking to your senpai. But if you're talking to your friend, and your friend is obviously quite geeky, go for it. I actually really like using this one. But there is now an alternative to this W. Instead of this one, a lot of people write the kanji for grass, kusa. Personally, I really don't like it, but a lot of people use it as LOL. So the reason why we use the kanji for grass, kusa, is because W, this one, looks like grass or weed. So that's how we started using the actual word for grass, kusa. So you could put the kanji kusa at the end just like LOL. But a lot of people use kusa like blah blah te kusa if you put a verb. Or if you put a noun, it would be noun de kusa. For example, I suck at this so much, LOL. We'd write heta sugite kusa. Heta sugite kusa. Heta is an adjective, hetana, but you use it like something ga heta and it means you are bad at something or you suck at something. So if you want to say my Japanese is bad, you'd say nihongo ga heta informally and nihongo ga heta desu formally. Uh, but heta sugiru, this sugiru means too much. So heta sugiru is like I'm too bad at something. I suck at this so much. And then sugiru is in the te form, sugite, and you connect kusa. So this is the standard now, you say blah blah te kusa. So heta sugite kusa. Some people abuse this kusa though. So the opposite of heta is jōzu. So when someone's so good at something, you can say jōzu sugiru, jōzu sugiru. But some people say jōzu sugite kusa for some reason. It's like Oh, you're so good, lol. It doesn't really make sense, but people love to use this one. Or if a game is so bad, you could say, Kusoge de kusa. Kusoge de kusa. Kusoge comes from two words. Kuso, shit. And then, ge comes from game. Ge is often used as game. That's just an abbreviation. So kusoge is t game. Kusoge de. We put de as because of for now. There are a few ways to say because of in Japanese, like kara no de. But you can also use the de particle for now when you want to say because of. 
like, 雨でキャンセルになった。Anyway, クソゲーでクサ It's like, I'm laughing because this is such a shitty game. And instead of クサ some people also say クサハエル。クサハエル。ハエル is the verb for plants growing. Plants or hair growing. So when you want to say someone grew up, you usually use the word 成長する or 大きくなる to become big. So usually grandparents would say 大きくなったね大きくなったね But、uh, when you talk about plants, grass or hair, You'd say, ケガ生える or クサが生える But yeah, people say クサ生える which means grass grows instead of クサ or W which, you know, is a bit silly because it's so much longer than W or the kanji クサ But people just do it for style, I guess Personally, I don't like it But go for it because a lot of people use it anyway But remember, it's internet slang, so use wisely. You don't want to use it if you're talking to a boss or friend who is not so geeky. And you'd also this W in this phrase, Cho W, Oma W. Cho Oma. I actually quite like this phrase. A lot of people use it.、Uh, cho Oma is short for Cho. ちょっと待ってお前 So, ちょっと待って is wait a second and お前 means you but お前 is meant to be the rude way to say you To be honest, あなた all of this sounds rude and 君 also sounds rude if it's not used in songs あなた can be used if you're talking to an unspecific person so textbooks would use the word あなた or in blogs you can use the word あなた to refer to you because you're not talking to a specific person if you're talking to a specific person you want to use that person's name、uh, but I've talked about this many times so I'm not going to talk about it anymore anyway omae is quite a popular way to say you、uh, among guys So, guys would often call their mates omae, but obviously it's rude.、Uh, but you know, it's kind of the same in English. You could call your mate twa and then that's fine, as long as you're good friends, right? And、uh, that's kind of the same. Omae is acceptable as long as you're good friends. Normally, people still use their name instead. But omae is such a common word when you play a game. You'd probably hear a lot of gamer raising like, Omae f u z a k e n na yo! Omae f u z a k e n na yo! Which is like, You stop b u l l me. You stop f- Fooling around with me. That's obviously a curse word, so you don't really want to say it normally, but you'd probably hear a game and say, Who's I can now? Anyway, Oma is you, but this cho Oma is quite a funny thing to say. It's kind of like, Wait, what? Or what the? When someone does something silly or stupid or unexpected, you could type this cho Oma. It's like, What are you doing, mate? So now you guys know that we love abbreviations, right? We like to make everything shorter. I mean, the same thing happens in English. Be right back would be usually written as BRB. A lot of Japanese gamers, especially gamers who play online games, try to learn English slang or the English abbreviations like BRB, but if they don't play games, they wouldn't know what that means. I want to introduce two Japanese internet abbreviations that could be confusing to most people, but if you're on the internet long enough, you'd know these two. So the first one is WKTK. It should be read as Wakuteka or Waku Waku Teka Teka. Which basically means excited. I personally don't use this, but the word waku waku, which is what's used in this wakuteka, is a very 
important one to remember even if you're not an otaku when you are excited and you're looking forward to something you normally say tanoshimi tanoshimi which means oh i'm excited i'm looking forward to it i can't wait for it i could say let's go pikachu tanoshimi but sometimes jokingly you could say waku waku to me excited but that's onomatopoeia so people don't generally use like waku waku suru you could but people generally use the word tanoshimi and the next one kwsk which stands for kuwashiku 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 means details please and kuwashiku is a very normal word so everyone should use that word like you could say kuwashiku oshiete kudasai kuwashiku oshiete kudasai or kuwashiku setsumei shite kudasai kuwashiku setsumei shite kudasai but this kwsk is only used on the internet obviously people wouldn't say kwsk and people would be like what and i said too but there is actually another one which is very rude it's kind of a popular slang ggrks you wouldn't guess like normal people wouldn't guess what it means but basically you want to read this gugure kasu gugure kasu this is such a rude phrase gugure comes from the verb guguru which means to google so that's slang already guguru Gugutta means I googled. Not everyone would understand what that means, especially because Japanese people often use Yahoo instead of Google. I definitely think Google is much better. But anyway, not everyone would know what Guguru means. Uh, like my mom probably wouldn't know what that means. Gugure is in the imperative form, uh, actually, rude imperative form, because we've got the te form which is used to request like tabete means please eat or eat and that's a friendly way to say eat if you want to sound rude more commanding you could conjugate differently tabero and that means eat and that's harsher and it's the same google if you want to make it sound more like a request please google you could say google you use the te form of the verb google but if you want to make it sound harsh, rough, you can say gugure, gugure. And then gugure kasu. Kasu is such a horrible word. It's like you piece of shit. Obviously, gugure kasu is not a nice thing to say, but when someone just keeps asking a question without searching first, people might go like gugure kasu. So there are obviously lots of words that gamers use but I picked ones that are common and a lot of people use. So the first one is gachise. Gachise. Gachise basically means core gamer. Someone who plays seriously or someone who puts a lot of time into a game. So you could for example say Pokemon gachise then that's like Pokemon core gamers not the sort of players who just play a little bit you know just catch one Pikachu and then leave or you've only played Pokemon Go and never played Pokemon you can't be Gachisei in order to be Gachisei you have to <laughs> grind hard and you know level up catch all Pokemon that's Gachisei or Splatoon Gachisei if you just have Splatoon you're not gachise. If you're Splatoon gachise, you play so much and like you're like professional. So for example, you could say gachise ni wa katenai. Gachise ni wa katenai. Or Smabura yatteru kedo gachise janai. So gachise is usually pretty good at the game that they've been playing a lot. And sometimes gamers who are really good are called Cheeto or cheeta. This is a bit weird because cheeto comes from the word cheat or cheeta also comes from the word cheeta. So basically someone who cheats like doesn't play right, right? They would like use some sort of plugins or something to win. So that's the main meaning. You can say cheeto suru to mean to cheat on games. 
because like koitsu zettai cheato shiteru like this guy is definitely cheating koitsu zettai cheato shiteru but because someone who cheats is so good people started using the word cheato to mean someone who is so good that person doesn't have to be cheating it's just as long as that person is undefeatable people might say cheato or cheeta cheeta is meant to be the correct one but a lot of people say cheeto daro this is impossible like you are so good at this so don't get offended when japanese person says cheeto they might not be accusing you of cheating uh, of course it depends like some people could mean that but some people could just mean oh you're so strong a lot of people on the internet say Kirito from Soda Online is Chito because he's undefeatable. So Chito Suru is only used about games. Only gamers usually use this. So normal people, people who don't play the games that much, uh, would use the word Zuru Suru. Zuru Suru, which is the normal way to say to cheat. So you don't have to be playing video games. You could be playing card games and if you cheat, people say Zuru Shiteru. Are you cheating? But if you're cheating on the exam, people would say Kanningu suru, Kanningu suru, which comes from the word cunning. Nomura kun wa Kanningu shita. And if you're talking about cheating on someone when you're in a relationship, you'd say Uwaki suru, Uwaki suru. So if you want to say, Are you cheating on me? You could say Uwaki shiteru, Uwaki shiteru. And the next word is not necessarily used in games. It could be used about shows or anime. Shibohuragu. Shibohuragu. Shibo means death. And then huragu comes from the English word flag. Normally we say hata about the normal flag. Hata. Or if it's a country flag, we say kokki. Kokki. Like America no kokki. So shibo flag literally means a flag of death, but it's used when you see something that could imply that the character is gonna die. So for example, you're watching a show, everyone's fighting against zombies, and there is this guy who is not very nice, but he turns into be a good guy in one episode, and he's like, leave it to me, you guys run! That character usually dies. <laughs> not always of course but that's shibo flag or just characters saying you guys run that's shibo flag or if there is a really romantic scene in the thriller or action film you can kind of tell that something bad is going to happen to one of them and that's also shibo flag so when you see something that kind of makes you think that character probably is going to die you can say shibo flag tatta shibo flag tatta but people also use this word shibo flag when they wanna be like i'm dead again that's internet slang people generally don't say it in real life but you're late for a really important meeting you could tweet kaigi ni okureru shibo flag tatta but when you just wanna say a character died you could say kyaraku ga Shinda o kyaraku ga shinjatta If you didn't like the fact that the character died Or you think that's such a shame that the character died You'd say shinjatta I made a lesson on this chatta, jatta So please check that out But when you wanna say my favorite character died You could say skina kyaraku ga shinjatta Skina kyaraku ga shinjatta And that's normal But if you are an otaku, especially anime otaku You might say Oshi kyara ga shinjatta Oshi kyara ga shinjatta This oshi kyara basically means the character that you support or your favorite character. This is also quite common slang among otaku. By the way, you could call yourself otaku, like I could say otaku desu, but you could also say like 
a n i o t a to mean anime otak. Well, you don't have to make it short, you could just say anime otak, manga otak. If you're obsessed with trains, you could say densha otak. But there is a type of girls who are called fujoshi. Fujoshi. The first kanji basically means rotten. It comes from the word kusatta. Kusatta, which means rotten. So, literally, rotten girls. And these are t y p e of girls who like manga or anime or it could be novels too that are about two boys loving each other. The type of genre is called BL. So, BL stands for boys love. So, Fujoshi is basically the girls who like BL. And you might be thinking, what about the word? Yaoi. Yeah, yaoi is such a common word, right?、Uh, but BL is the broader name for this genre. Some people say it's basically the same thing, but some people say yaoi is a type of BL. So yaoi has to include a lot of sex scenes, but people sometimes say、oh, yaoi is basically the same thing as BL. But there are also otaku girls who just like good looking anime boys. And those girls don't really have a name, but they often like to play a genre of a game called Otome Ge. Otome Ge. Ge is short for game, but Otome Ge is also often called Otoge. But Otoge could also mean this. Type of games where you play music while you play games. Different kanji, but it sounds the same. So people say otome ge to clarify what they're talking about. In otome ge, the main character, the character that you play, would be a girl and you interact with lots of good looking boys, ikemen, and decide who to date, basically. So you might be thinking, oh, Japanese girls are weird. Now, Japanese boys also play that kind of game. Japanese straight otaku guys would play garuge, garuge. Garu comes from the English word gal. Garuge is a game where a male character they play as interacts with lots of cute girls and chooses who to date. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the Japanese otaku culture. And the last word that I want to teach you is up. Up. So, up should be written like this. And this means upload. Obviously, this is an internet slang, not everyone uses it. A lot of people just say upload suru. But you probably would see this up a lot in the comments on Niko Niko Doga or on YouTube. A lot of people say up otsu. Up otsu. Which means thank you for uploading this. This otsu comes from the word otsukare. Or otsukare sama de shita, more formally,、uh, which is again lost in translation, but you could often translate like thank you for your hard work or you worked hard, you deserve some rest. But yeah, up otsu is another popular thing to say on the internet. Thank you for uploading this. So if you want to sound like an、um, otaku, you could say up otsu in the comments. I hope you found this lesson helpful. And if you want more videos like this, please let me know. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon because it really helps. Alright, thank you so, so much for your support. Ciao, またね Bye bye. Or, またにゃ